Hello, hello, hello. The sound, we actually have uh, lav mics. We'll need that for people to, to talk. Well, we'll need to give that to the speakers. We, we do have, we have name tags too. Thank you, Rich Bowen. Um, we'll need this later. We have uh, props. We have um, the ApacheCon lightning talks are a long, long tradition of um, five minutes to talk about whatever you want to talk about that's something related to Apache and your community or your technology here. Oh, really? So they're, yeah. wow, jeez. The voice of God. And the, and the beer comes in. and The beer comes come, in, come and people. Jim's voice goes up real high because the beer's in. And we have Here's one beer. really important rule, uh, no slides. No slides. Five minutes, no Five slides. Minutes, no slides. No Minimal slides. heckling. Uh, unless we unless do Shane is talking, then you can heckle as much yeah, as no, you I, want. Yeah, uh, so no, I'm the practice speaker, OK? So, so OK, I can't wait for Rich's talk. Um, yes. We do have one exception with slides, that there is the Rich Bowen rule, where sometimes you just have to have slides for the heartwarming and interesting message. So that is the one exception. But did no, this is not us, yet. Did not you yet. Give us a beer? In the in the in the back booth, we just need a timer. We don't need those yet. Just the timer, not just the slide. Timer. Just the timer. Um, I believe the beers are open and available. So yes. as we um, coming parade like monkeys up here, people start going grabbing some beer. Um, that's very very good. Um, it helps uh, everyone enjoy both Shane and I immensely. We become much funnier yes. the more you drink. So I would suggest drink heavily. And, and you should probably start drinking before we do, if that's your kind of thing. Yes. Thank you, Oh, Nick. why, thank you. We didn't even have to ask. We didn't even have to ask. Um, and okay. Jillian, the, that, the, we need the timer, but not the slides yet. Thank you. And just a reminder that everyone who does talk gets one of these fancy little uh, Capital One cable rolls. If we have any left over, I will be lobbing them into the audience. They do have little hard things on there so that they hit you, don't sue us. But well, they will be kind of nice. I would like to... Another, another beer? Another yes. beer. Yes, well, Jim, since, since Capital oh. One, since Capital Thank One you. is sponsoring the beers, you get two. Right, I get okay. two. I get Thank two. You. Thank you, I one. So hopefully I'll be funnier too after two beers. Uh, so I think we should, we should get moving so people can get going. We uh, should get started, yes. If David North is here, David North. Is David he North. Here? Is David North. Yes, Dave. he is, and he has, David has a great shirt. I mean, Ooh. not that I'm biased, but. Ooh, even better. Uh, so David Very will be good. talking while we're, we're getting our beers um, about Actually, it's oddly appropriate for getting beers because he wants to talk about beer. Well, no, but after no. beer. Oh, okay. After I beer. IoT, Apache, oh. HTTPD. Right. Thank you, Jamie. Everybody okay. else. And our office shower. Ooh, that sounds very. So we have five strange. minutes for our first speaker, victim. Excuse me. Uh, thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Um, so I wanted to talk about this, which was uh, the last sort of little fun side project I did. But I was wondering, where's the Apache angle? And then I realized that actually there is Apache software at the heart of this project, but it works so well and I've used it for so, so long that I'd almost forgotten it was there. It's that good. <laughs> so flashback about a month ago. I work in an office with 70 other people. And as the weather gets warmer, more and more of us cycle to work. And that's all fine and good. The problem is that we only have one shower in our office building. So if you've got 10 people cycling to work in the morning, it gets a bit contention. Um, and it was really boring standing outside waiting for the shower to be ready. And if I go and sit at my desk and do work, I keep finding that I've missed my opportunity to get into the shower. So what I wanted was some way of being able to tell from the comfort of my desk that the shower was available. So what I did was I got hold of a magnetic door sensor, this is the IoT part of the project, stuck that to the door. Um, people usually leave it open when they're done, so it's a reliable but not 100% indicator. This then calls out when the door opens or closes over the internet. At the other end, there's the Apache HTTPD server running a little CGI script that does the updates. So we get events for door open, door closed. And 
thanks to the magic of Apache. Um, it's really easy to put a little hook there with the CGI to receive these events, integrate with our office single sign-on system so that the crucial corporate data of whether you can use the shower or not is protected by login. And um, it all just works. And so I know I'm not allowed to have slides, but I would like to show you just to prove that this is real. You can see here because it's gone, it's, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's, um, it's five minutes to 11 in the UK, so oddly enough, the answer is yes. The shower in our office is currently free, and the door has been open since uh, 11 minutes past two Florida time. So that was my most recent uh, Internet of Things project, and it has saved me many minutes every morning, so it's all, all thanks to a bit of Apache software at the heart of things. <laughs> Jim, I was a little worried when he says IoT and the office shower. Like, mm -hmm. is this surveillance or something? Well, it is the Internet of Things. Yeah. So I guess so, it depends on. But so CGI you. too. That is so old school. I mean, that is great. I mean, oh, yeah. hopefully oh, yeah. it was Perl. Were you running Perl, maybe? Oh, Python. Python. Well, oh, it would okay. have been even more more beautiful. No, so I'm so glad. And let's, it, it's a good notice too. Let's, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it polite. Let's keep it fun. Keep, I mean, well, that's very clean. We'll sudsy. Keeping it sudsy would be yeah. good too, you know, right? Uh, so we're not all fun and games. No, no, we're not. We are dead serious sometimes. So, <clears throat> so next we have Mr. Trevor Grant. Yes. Mr. Grant here, please. Uh, Trevor, Trevor. Yes, <laughs> yes, he is. Wow, I'm, in, I'm impressed you brought your own, your own uh, uh, cheerleader couch. Uh, Trevor Grant would like to talk about Apache Mahout, out with the MapReduce, and in with the GPU. Mm, the Very poo -poo. cool. How you doing? Yeah, you can clap, that's fine. It's, no? okay. There we go, there we go, I'm started. Um, Trevor Grant, I am by night a PMC on the Apache Mahout project, and by day, I'm actually paid to be an evangelist in open source, which means I get to go around and just get people all jazzed up about working on open source projects that I like. Um, I usually, when I'm doing this job, don't take notes, but I was kind of nervous coming up here, and then thought I'd be cool and have a beer with me, and then didn't think about what I was doing, and I have all my notes on my hand, so I'm gonna have to wing this one. Apache Mahout has been around for a little while. How many people have heard of it? Hands? A lot. Keep those hands up if you think that Apache Mahout is machine learning on MapReduce. Yeah, there we go. And that's the problem and why I wanted to get up here. We have not done that. It's been de deprecated since like 2014. And if you've been anywhere near me, shared a table, had some lunch, had some coffee, the entire time I've been out here, there's a good chance I cornered you and gave you the long form version of this talk about how Apache Mahout is doing all these exciting things. We're engine neutral. We run on Spark. We run on Flink. We run on H2O. You can write your own bindings. We run things on H um, GPUs, native solvers, CPUs. It is the coolest machine learning library you've ever been a part of, but everyone thinks, oh, MapReduce. Because for every blog post that comes out about all the cool new stuff we're doing, two more people write, oh, I learned how to do recommenders on MapReduce and Mahoom. It's very hard to get people the word out. And so that's what I want to be up here doing. I want to, if you take nothing away from ApacheCon, of all the cool talks you've seen, remember, Mahoot is no longer MapReduce. We're on Spark, we're on all these cool things. We create huge GPU clusters. It's great. Also, an important thing to remember about the Mahout project, not the most important thing, but very important, we've got the best swag, koozies. Ooh, it's very nice. Um, let's see, other things. Uh, three more minutes, I can dive into the stack. <laughs> Why not? Ah. <laughs> uh, so I've been saying some crazy things, like we have distributed engines, we're engine native. How many people work on a project that's like big data, big distributed data? Probably a few are interested in getting involved in something. Um, any big data, distributed data structure, how we do that is we wrap it in a matrix, whatever the native structure is for your engine. And then someone who's a real expert in your engine thinks, okay, how do we do a matrix transpose? What that lets you do is we have a Scala DSL that sits on top, and you can write in a very Python-like way, in a very R-like way, matrix algebra. Now, this is another problem that we run into. 
because everyone likes machine learning to be this bag of algorithms, this one-liner with methods, and I set some hyperparameters, and then I fire it off, and then magic happens, and then everything comes back, and ta-da. And it's not like college math. I don't have to like explain the statistics or anything. It was just, it went off into hyperspace. Machine learning happened, and it was great. We don't have quite the big, as big of a target audience because you have to go remember that terrible college linear algebra to really get the exciting usefulness of it. But that's where all the magic happens because using Apache Mahout, you deploy, well, I wanna say, you read a, let's say you read a machine learning journal of statistics article on Monday morning. You spend Monday afternoon, you're thinking about the article, kind of grokking it, understanding the algorithm. Tuesday, you sit down and write some Mahout. Tuesday afternoon, finish up some docs, maybe unit tests go into Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Wednesday afternoon, you have a brand new, just held up the presses two or three days ago, algorithm written in a distributed fashion. If you've ever tried to write a distributed machine learning algorithm, it is a really, really, really big pain. And that's really the exciting, that's the fun punchline. 38 seconds left. I am able to read a couple of these. Um, Apache Streams Incubator Project. Check it out. The coolest social data you've ever, uh, coolest social data project in all of Apache. If you want to hear more about Mahout, uh, we're doing a birds of a feather talk coming up at 5, 6.30? What are we on, Eastern? Okay, soon. Coming soon. Um, come out, see me. I really appreciate it. 13, 11 seconds left to clap. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I have to admit, Mahout has been really, really on the top of my mind. I've really been you know, thinking about getting much more involved with it. So this is really, really cool stuff. Besides, I just like the name, Mahout. That's a, that's a hoot yeah. of a name. Perfect, and perfect timing. Uh, perfect, perfect timing, timing there. yes. So uh, let's go. So I just wanted to bring out one point is we also support those of us you know, who don't choose to imbibe for whatever reason. For whatever reason. You know, if, if alcohol is not your thing, I know the other half of us, it's caffeine, right? So we go both ways. This is the first, I'll be honest with you, this is the first real beer I've had in about five weeks. I've been on one of those low carb diets and so, and this is most probably one of the hardest things I had to give up. I was drinking Michelob Ultra. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that just burns right off. Whiskey just Sorry. burns right off. Beer's got the carbs, not the whiskey. So I didn't say this was the first drink I had in five weeks. I said this was the first <laughs> beer I had in five weeks. Big difference. So, uh, but I think we should go back to a little old school. Yes. And remind yes. us why we're here at ApacheCon. And I would love to welcome Rich Bowen, who would like to talk about why I love ApacheCon, or rather, we say Mr. ApacheCon. So, save that. Keep it. All right, I'm going to talk about why I love ApacheCon. It's kind of a tradition in these lightning talks to have somebody come up here and talk about why they love Apache or hate Apache or whatever. Um, ApacheCon is the high point of my year, every year, going back to March of 2000. Um, in, in late 1999, Ken Kaur, uh sent me an email and said I should s uh, submit a talk to this new conference called ApacheCon. And I said, you're crazy, I have nothing to talk about and submitted three talks and they were all accepted. Um, and so I found myself in Orlando, standing on a stage in front of a few hundred people who thought I knew what I was talking about, and that was a great feeling. So, you know, that's, that's part of why I love ApacheCon. I've made a career out of playing that game and standing on stage and letting people believe I know what I'm talking about. Um, this is the 28th ApacheCon since the creation of the Apache Software Foundation. You might say 29 if you count the one that was before Apache was a foundation. I don't count that because I didn't get to go. Um, in, in fact, I've been to every ApacheCon except for the one in Sinsheim, Germany in 2012, and I will never forgive my manager for uh, preventing me from going. But I think that uh, I hold the record for attending more Apache cons than anyone else. I've been to 27 of them, so that's awesome. I love being on stage. I love having all you people look at me and think I know what I'm talking about. So that's part of why I love ApacheCon. Um, 
But there are, there are many other reasons. Uh, ApacheCon is where I come to see my oldest friends, many of whom I met at ApacheCon. Um, and, and I met several new ones this week, so this is why I love ApacheCon. I, I love ApacheCon because it shows me that I'm not alone working on this open source stuff. I see all these other people. And, uh, you know, C.S. Lewis famously said, I read to know that I'm not alone, except that he didn't actually say that. That's a quote from a movie that was about him, but we'll pretend that he said it. Um, I, I love ApacheCon because I love Apache and Hawaiian shirts. You'll notice that everyone that's been up here so far has been wearing some kind of Hawaiian shirt, and there's no mistake at here. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed Shane's lightning talks, and uh, so I thought I would be Shane today. Um, I love ApacheCon because of the passion that I see in the people that attend. Uh, several of us that have been doing ApacheCon forever start to wonder if we're the only ones that care about Apache anymore, and then we come here and we see the amazing people working on amazing new projects, um, people half our age that are still working on this open source thing, and that's really exciting to me. Um, I, uh, the, the, uh, the sessions here range from the esoteric and philosophical to the deeply practical. But at the heart of everyone is, is this desire to solve real problems in the real world, to, to scratch your own itch, as the saying goes. I love ApacheCon because of our sponsors. Talking to sponsors about why they're here at ApacheCon has the effect of recentering us because it shows us that it's about solving real worlds in the real problems in the real world, that making lives better. Um, and, and I spend. Uh, yeah, people, people depend on Apache software because we have a reputation for our vendor-neutral, high-quality software. And it's sustainable because of those esoteric philosophies that we cling to in the face of practical realities. I, I love ApacheCon because it's part of how I identify, I identify myself. I've spent my entire adult life working on ApacheCon. So it's, it's a real, it's a part of identi my identity. I sometimes refer to it as my life's work. I've spent hundreds of hours on it, but I'm not the only one. Um, other people, including our amazing producers there at the back of the room, our numerous volunteers, our tireless infrastructure contractors, our beloved Melissa, and our supportive board of directors. ApacheCon is built on my sweat and tears, but also on yours. It's older than two of my kids, and the other kid has grown up watching me go off to ApacheCon and knows that it's such an important part of my life. The wall of my office is covered with those 27 ApacheCon badges, and all the people that attend video calls with me say, what's that behind you on the wall? So as we look forward to the next ApacheCon, details coming very soon, I hope, uh, we need to figure out what you want in ApacheCon and make it that. ApacheCon is primarily about building community. Thank you so much for coming, my friends. I hope that you'll come again, and I hope that you'll love it as much as I do, but I don't think that's possible. Wow, I don't envy the person who goes after that. Yeah, wow, that Rich Man, is, man, oh man, that's gonna be rough. Rich is, uh, whew. I will just say thank you to Rich Bowen, both for Mr. This is Mr. ApacheCon, so just a round of applause yeah. just for Rich for keeping all of the rest of us focused on ApacheCon. Um, and I want to thank Rich in particular because I often, uh, I don't know how many years now, I've given my talk. I have no idea. Many seems like why, decades, actually. Why I love, oh, oh. I'm sure it, <laughs> why I love the, -boom -boom. why I love the ASF is a traditional talk I've given since 2007 at least, if not longer. Will you um, be giving it today? No, I will not, because Rich has given, oh. we've had the, the keynote with right, the, the right. love letter, and we've had Rich with the heartfelt, why right. I love this. So, but I would like to say that the next speaker will be me. <gasps> now, one, we have one, two rules, right? The five minutes, and what's the other rule? No slides. No slides, unless you are Rich Bowen. So, Jillian, see? Uh, that's Rich. Yes, yeah, so Rich now. Bowen that's is allowed slides at the lightning talk. Right. So, <laughs> see? So, we've got this. 
You didn't know we were this organized. And the other rule was Jim gets now off the stage. Uh, we didn't know we were this organized either. So, um, <clears throat> so my lightning talk is why I love the ASF. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. No, let me try again. My lightning talk is five things I never could have imagined doing by Rich Bowen. Oh, um, excuse me, by Jane Kirk Rue. No, really, it's me. <laughs> but I'm already up here. You can't kick me off. Five things I, I never could have imagined doing as growing up that I think are important for the community and, and a better world. That if you told me as a, as a, as a kid, I, would have, I wouldn't even have laughed at you. I just would have had a blank stare. Like, I would do that? I don't understand. First one, doing open source. So we can all raise our hand if we use one of these. Um, the first computer I actually hacked on, uh, yeah, not, not, not many. First computer I hacked on was a Trash 80 which I actually got my father to send back because it wasn't good enough, and he actually got one of the first Apple II Pluses ever made. The story he tells, he got it from Steve Jobs, but I don't believe that. But I didn't actually get into coding then. I actually went off to become an engineer and then worked elsewhere in software, and it wasn't until late in my career that I actually came back to open source. And it, I, wasn't, I didn't plan it, I just ended up here. My job ended up here, I was interested in it, I asked questions, I got involved. So my message there is, uh, I could have imagined doing this, but when you come up to an open source project, ask the questions and people will welcome you. I didn't always have a great childhood. And I don't actually remember most of my childhood, which is good. And I could not have imagined having a child when I was growing up, when I was in college, after college. I had convinced my friends I would never have children. And lo and behold, I met my wife and things changed. We have a daughter. My daughter's Roxanne, she's 12. And this uh, is, was a huge thing for me, most important thing in my life. And the le lesson here is we are all here as volunteers helping out with ApacheCon, helping out with their projects. We have day jobs, whatever. We also have families. And the family, your family, your friends, those are more important than all the rest of it. So we need to be patient with other people in our communities. When they don't show up in a project, Maybe they have real life to deal with. And that's okay. It's okay that we're not all on our Apache project 24-7. So having a daughter who loves animals, who loves horse riding, um, leads to other questions. No, you can't have a pony. Well, I could not, un unimaginably unimaginable that we now own <laughs> a pony. <laughs> So he is uh, a Welsh pony, 13 hands high. His name is Quincy. My daughter absolutely loves him. And the barn owner was going to kick him out and said, I don't want him. Uh, so we bought him for a dollar. And last weekend, we actually had him trailered up to uh, his new home, where apparently he's actually a lot happier. So my daughter knows this is not a long-term proposition. We're looking for a new home for him. <laughs> so if you want a pony, let me know. <laughs> But what's important here is it's not about getting the pony, um, it's about maintenance. So we paid a dollar for a big horse, pony, excuse me. Uh, it's about maintenance, it's, a, it's about $1,000 a month to feed and give it a house. So the, the lesson for project communities is it's not about just getting the code out there, it's getting the docs out there, answering the questions, fixing the bug. It's helping new contributors be able to figure out what you have and then help you build the next thing. So what I could never have imagined when I was a child, or anywhere before that, is becoming a public speaker. So this is a great photo by Julian Cash, who's done a lot of uh, high-tech conferences, who does painting with light. But I've been doing ApacheCon speaking for years. I've been doing OSCON, um, and I've been doing OSCON Ignite, which is an awesome kind of lightning talk thing. I could never have imagined doing that earlier in my career. And it's still hard for me. I still get nervous before I come up here. The lesson here is just do it. We all have a hard time getting up on stage. And there are a lot of us who, once you ask somebody else and you realize they're worried too, that helps you. That helps them too. And then those of us who have been speaking, we want to help you build better CFPs, build better missions for conference. We have a lot of knowledge in Apache that we can bring to a lot more conference. And I never could have imagined 
growing up with just my parents. I'm an only child, really not cousins, uncles, anybody else. I never could have imagined becoming part of such a large family. As Rich says, his oldest friends are here. And I don't just think that he means his oldest friends <laughs> are here, his longest friends. But um, this is from 2007, and I believe these are Apache members in 2007. And I believe I've had a meal with every one of them and with a number of people here. And the family and the community is why Apache is so successful. So, thank you. And try to do things you never could imagine you do. Wow, very, very nice. Congratulations to Shane. Shane, that was great. That was really good. Very good. Um, Ooh, what? Yeah, we did look a lot better back there in the old days, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, well, that's what happens with time. It just so is Mel here? Going. Yes, so come on up. Um, so we'll do a little serious talk. We, yes. we all, you know, so everybody can, can wipe your tears, your tears up. Your tears, wipe your um, tears away. Mel would like to talk about collective responsibility for open source software risk. So part of the model of foundations, perhaps, what he's talking about, giving you a better experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you and Tricky welcome. how that works. So I feel like a bit of a corporate chill coming up here because I actually get paid to come to conferences. But, uh, <laughs> you know, those are very emotional appeals uh, from previous speakers. And I, I think that it's something special about Apache that elicits that kind of emotion, right? That being said, you know, when we talk about open source, um, I think that there's certain responsibilities that we have that I think that as a community you guys are very much aware of. So uh, first of all, I'm going to fall back to things that you guys talk about in your, your Apache way with regards to hats. Um, I have different hats, right? Um, now I'm here as the open source product manager for Synopsys Software Integrity Group. Uh, essentially, you know, um, Synopsys is a very large company, right? But uh, software, especially in IoT, has kind of spurred them to this, towards this innovation. Um, also, I, I'm, a, I'm the current administrator for something called Coverity Scan. So just as a show of hands, who here is familiar with Coverity Scan? A few of you, right? And I think it's very much project dependent. Right? So essentially, since 2006, um, Coverity Scan has been providing static analysis to open source projects. Um, it's continued up to the, today, and we have roughly 4,300 active open source projects and about 19,000 developers who have actually interacted with our system. Now, the current Apache projects include Hadoop, Cassandra, Tomcat, HTTPD, Traffic Server, right? NiFi, Pig, Spark. Storm. So some of the larger projects are already aware of what we can potentially provide. And what does that mean, right? Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're helping open source projects mature over time, right? And, you know, while we don't really get a lot of credit, I I'm assuming that the issues that are found are actually being remediated in these projects, right? And providing long-term stability for the end users, right? Um, now I'm going to switch hats, right? I think that, you know, as an open source, um, well, as a beneficiary of open source, right? I really appreciate that you know all of this developer effort goes into what is essentially enterprise grade software, right? And um, I think the Apache way, and you know the number of successful Apache projects, is a realization of how transformative collective collaboration can be when developing software, right? Um, but at the same time, I think we need to acknowledge the role of users who actually consume and rely on the software that we produce, right? So software is imperfect. I think, you know, as a, as a developer, we don't write perfect code. It's not a realistic assumption that we can actually do that, right? But I think this is due to the fact that, you know, software development is a largely human endeavor, and we as humans are imperfect, right? So. Another aspect of modern, you know, software development is the increasing complexity of the software we develop. So, you know, Linus's law, which is essentially given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow, is challenged by some recent bugs in code that had the benefit of public scrutiny, right? 
So, you know, I think when you talk about risk in open source, right, it's not that the quality of the software is necessarily inferior, right? But, you know, we can test so far, right? Edgar Dijkstra's famous uh, words are, testing shows the presence, not the absence of bugs. And I think that, you know, that tells us that risk is inherent, right, regardless of the overall quality of the software and the development practice of individual projects, right? So um, things we collectively rely on put us at risk. And we can talk about, you know, heart bleed, shell shock, stage fright, all those things that, you know, we've probably at some point been affected by. But essentially, you know, what we do when we actually talk about those incidences are things that, you know, they're vulnerabilities that we, we only know about, but they don't actually give us any indication with regards to preventing future exploitation. So, you know, I only have 30 seconds left here. I think I, I uh, put a little bit too much uh, with regards to my content, but essentially uh, what I like is that the, uh, this idea of maturity being part of the ASF's incubator project. And I would like to put a challenge out there or a call to action to, you know, subscribe as many of these projects that have high visibility, high impact, right, into SCAN because I think that you could benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is for you. Thank you. An incredibly valid point. Um, you know, open source really is the way that the world is eating software. So as much as we can do to make sure that our code is as reliable, as stable, as secure as we hope and think it is, let's take the opportunity to do that. And that helps all of us because we're using the software as well as the rest of the world. That's right. And That's right. it's a lot of other people who are using it. So a lot of people have been using our software in the past, in the future, long, all long around. Long ago, way in the past. So maybe you have some ideas about how far way back yeah, I do. software goes. Yeah, I do. I do. I, I've got some ideas okay. about that. You want to take it off then? Is this a good opportunity? Yeah, no, I think oh. this, is, this is a okay. good time for that. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Hopefully I'm not taking anybody's spot. No, nope. no. Nope. Um, Thank many you, Jim. How many people here are familiar with the Wayback Machine? Just raise your hand. Now, how many are familiar with the origin of the Wayback Machine with Mr. Peabody and his boy Sherman? Raise your hand. Okay, and I'm not even talking that terrible CGI movie. I'm talking about the old school fractured fairy tales, okay? For the next four minutes or so, I'm going to be Mr. Peabody, and you will all be my boy Sherman. Okay, I love history. I really do. I think it's very, very important. Tradition is also very, very important to me. Because history and tradition are what define and create a community. Sometimes you codify that tradition and it becomes what we call policy. But they're all very, very important. Uh, I used to, a long time ago, was a real comic book fanatic. Loved them. Up until they started retconning everything, like Hal Jordan was a bad, you know, Green Lantern, and then, you know, Peter Parker was a clone and stuff like that. Forget it, you know, give me old school stuff. But the thing is about comics is that you can know everything you need to know about a superhero by their origin story. Okay? Batman. His parents got killed. Spoiler, sorry about that if you didn't know, okay? But wow, that defines the character. Okay, Peter Parker gets his powers. A burglar runs away. The burglar kills his uncle. Great power, great responsibility. Wow. So an origin story provides so much detail about things. So I'm going to use the Wayback Machine and give you the origin story of Apache. About 1994, 1995 or so. There was this web server called the NCSA web server. A bunch of people were using. Very, very popular. Most popular web server out there. Everybody was using it very, very happily. But then the person who was responsible for creating it, Rob McCool, got a great opportunity to go off to Netscape. It was right, you know, the same people who were doing Netscape, the, server, you know, the NCSA web server, were also doing Mosaic. They left. We were screwed. We had businesses, 
protocols, all kinds of things dependent on a piece of software that was now completely, completely dead. Nobody was working on it. Not a single soul was working on it. That's a terrible position to be. Thank goodness there were people with the right mix of skills and talents and capability to basically be able to re-kick off that community, which is hard to do. Very, very tough to do. But we succeeded. And that was the start of the Apache Group, which is what became the Apache Software Foundation. But the key takeaway from this is that we realized how painful it was to be dependent on a piece of software that could just go in a second, in a minute, because there was no one around to maintain it. And that's where our focus on community over code came from. Because as long as you have a fully engaged community behind it, no one else will hopefully have to suffer from the pain and anguish that we had to back when the Apache group started. So kudos for everyone for keeping the vision alive. Thank you. And kudos to Jim for still being here God knows how many years later. I'm not going to say no, the years. No, 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 no kudos. No kudos required. Yep. Um, Sympathies, maybe, would be good. I, I'd appreciate some sympathies, yeah. but no kudos. Please, please. We have, done, we have done a lot over the years, and it has been a long journey. And it's been not just, not just the code that we give away, but the, the model. Yes, definitely. Think definitely. of all the other open source foundations that are copying what we do, essentially. Cop copycats. Copycatters. Yeah. But we need to also spread open source around the world. We need to spread it like Johnny Appleseed. So uh, we have Apache open okay. source in China. Uh, from at, at Apache Rocket MQ, they in here. Our next Van, Von Van Gosling Van and Gosling. Wang Zhao, no. which I'm not doing a very good job of. Oh my goodness, they're not here? No, the, oh. the Apache Rocket MQ guys aren't here? I guess they're not here. Okay. That, is, a, that well. is terrible. Well, I mean, we know a little bit about what's going on, you know, in the open source engine. I mean, it's, it's really yes. a huge, um, uh, ecu, you know, system for open source really starting to pop up. I mean, if you look at some of the downloads of Apache yes. Software yes. Foundation projects, China is most probably one of the biggest ones. There is huge so. interest. There's huge uptick. It's about getting it organized, and it's about trying to take some of that culture and see how you can explain the culture of sharing here with that kind of culture there. Right. And definitely kudos to, to Alibaba and Huawei for yes. helping to really push that effort inside of China. I know there's a couple uh, projects inside the ASF, you know, sponsored and, and, and donated by both. So please find them out and be sure to contribute back to them. Yes. And one of the fastest Apache projects ever, Apache Rocket MQ, literally takes your messages on rockets, transcontinental rockets, rockets. and so, puts them in an MQ, which is a Magic Q, yes, which makes them go like tachyons, like really fast. So you get it even before it's sent, which is really cool. So that's how you get your messages when you can send them across with rockets. Then you see. Uh, so if we don't have a technical talk here, which is fine, we have plenty of community talks here. We have yeah, plenty of we do have community talks. Love of community talks here, and I think the person knows who they are, if I say the love of community. He loves community. He loves this community. I love this community. He Apache. just doesn't love community. Do I he need to say your community. name, Daniel? Come on up. Daniel, come on up. And tell us your story about please, please, the Apache community. Please. And as he's walking up, if everyone wants to get up and get a beer, maybe take a smoke, bathroom break or something. Oh, here he comes. OK. Thanks. So just before my talk earlier today, actually, Jim said, oh, gosh, I'm so tired, I could really use a nap. I think now would be a great time. Where should I do it? Oh, Daniel, where are you talking? Thanks, Jim. What's up, everyone? Hey, for those that I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Daniel. Uh, and one of the things that Jim pointed out, actually, in his talk just a few minutes ago, is one of the taglines we have at the ASF is community over code. And he talked about the reasons why. Uh, but the thing that I really love about ApacheCon, I get to kind of come and talk with, uh, frankly, the smartest people in the world, right? Um, I have a slight confession to make. I'm an infrastructure guy. 
I've written code that's reached production in 13 different languages, though, so I'm like a closet developer. And as we're out on the floor, I'm able to talk with folks, and I'm, I'm learning that I'm, I'm not the only one that experiences the, the highs and lows of writing code. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? In like 15 minutes, you're like, I am a code god! <laughs> and then five minutes later, like, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did that, <laughs> right? So, um, I, I love it here because, you know, we, we, we get to meet and hang out with a lot of folks that maybe we don't meet or see during our day job. Um, so, what I would like you guys to do, a little uncomfortable, think about some things about yourself, and we're going to talk with someone that you haven't met yet. Look around, pick someone out, hmm, I don't know that guy or I don't know that guy, and figure out what you're going to tell that person. So to kind of get the juices flowing, I always do this and come up with a few things about myself. So here's how you may want to go ahead and approach the conversation. And I'm going to give back whatever time is left so we can all kind of meet each other that we haven't met yet. So, hi, my name's Daniel. This year, I taught a class on open source software development at a local university. Thank you, thank you. And Seriously, if anyone's interested, I will give you the curriculum. That's the hard part. I, I want other people to do this. Hi, my name's Daniel, and I really think we need to acknowledge this awesome new feather. Guys, this is great. Hi, my name's Daniel, uh, and every year when I head to ApacheCon, I forget something. But this year, luckily, it was just my razor, so... Not so bad. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Daniel, and I, I just uh, got accepted to be a member of the foundation this year, which is really cool. <laughs> Something else weird happened this year. Hi, I'm Daniel. I've got a college student now. Wow. <laughs> so, it's a conversation starter, so let's do that. Let's try that out. Look around the room, find somebody you haven't met, somebody you haven't talked to, uh, and introduce yourself. Tell them something about you. And we have a minute and 45 seconds, maybe even longer, if we can maybe stretch the rules to do that. So, go. Okay, so let's wrap it up. Uh, don't stop the conversation, though. 
keep talking, keep hanging out. Everybody smile. So thank you guys. Uh, I, I love that we just kind of grew our community. Uh, and, and there's one last thing. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I love this community. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, Daniel. Uh, oh, well. Another reminder, uh, Marshall. This, ooh, this has been uh, sponsored by Capital One. There's still more beer left. More are soda, those, too. Are those snackies over there, too? And snacks. And, uh, beers and snacks. Oh, my goodness. So be sure to indulge. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Skinny pop pop. Delivery pop. service. Carbs. Awesome. These is are carbs. <laughs> Weren't you listening? <laughs> but this is community. We try and help. <laughs> but our community is, is people, and that's the most important thing. It but is. It is. Code's important, too. I mean... That's what gets us here, and that's it, what, it's what gets, gets new here. people here. It's Once, the glue yes. that solidifies this homogeneous, lovely, nougat-filled mass of people, is the code. Um, okay, well, we'll take your word on that one for Jim. Um, so let's switch it up and do a little bit of technology with Will about Apache Agent. Ooh, that that sounds like a TV show. Technology with Will. Yes. So if Will could come up, I hope Will's here. Where's Will? That'd be awfully Will? embarrassing. Uh, yes. Okay, come yes. on. Yes. And his talk, I think, is going to be edgy, isn't it? Oh, edgy? totally edgy, right? Edgy? No, 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 no. And thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Will. Um, I'm a committer for Apache Agent. Um, and it, it kind of sounds like it's Apache Committers Anonymous up here. Like, hi, my name is Will. Uh, I'm a committer. I uh, one time committed code without running all the tests. I don't know. Um, but um, so, yeah, Apache Agent, um, I'm, it's sort of a plug. But um, uh, I'm going to paint a picture. So let's say that uh, it's Monday. A client comes to you, and the client says, I want you to do video analytics. Uh, I want you to I don't, like, detect faces in a video feed or something. And you're like, OK, I'd like, it's, it's a hard problem. But um, uh, you use uh, uh, Spark to do the streaming. You use, I guess, AWS or OpenStack to like, scale out. Um, you do OpenCV to do the face detection, and it's like working great. You barely finish in time. Congrats. Uh, and then the next month, you get a bill in the mail for $70,000 because you are sending uh, raw video feed over a 4G connection. Uh, to put that a different way, $70,000 is about 8,750 Chipotle burritos, which is a lot. Um, so the, the point is there are a, a lot of streaming technologies out there, but a lot of them are designed to run in a cluster. So you wouldn't want to run Spark on a, on a phone, or at least I haven't seen it. Um, you wouldn't run a, uh, you can like write a Kafka connect, uh, uh, what do you call it, client uh, on, on a phone, I guess. But um, uh, the point is there are a lot of operations which need to be run in a uh, streaming manner on edge devices, on things like phones, on things like Raspberry Pis. And um, by streaming, I mean the way in which data is consumed from devices that might not turn off. Uh, for, for, for example, if you have like a temperature sensor that's uh, looking at the, the temperature of an engine, um, and uh, if, if the temperature goes too high, then you like turn off the engine. Um, but the point is you can't wait until all the data is there because it doesn't turn off. You have to consume it as it comes in. So that's sort of the idea behind streaming. And this needs to happen uh, in a streaming framework uh, at, at the edge. And this is exactly how Agent is positioned. It's an, uh, it's an IoT framework. It, it's written in Java. It runs on the JVM, so it's supported on Android devices. It runs on Raspberry Pis, really, really anything that has a JVM. Um, and it uh, does data streaming. Uh, for example, the kinds of applications you could write, you could uh, create a smart microphone, something which only sends uh, sound information when the decibel level goes high enough, like, like when somebody's talking on a microphone. Um, and you wouldn't want to send data otherwise, because then you're just sending uninteresting information. You're, just, you're paying for every kilobyte that you send over a network. And you need to do streaming processing beforehand. Um, for example, streaming processing could also be like uh, windowing. So if you, you need the last like three minutes of, of data, and you need to do some operation on that pool of data. If you wrote that yourself, you'd, uh, it's a lot of boilerplate code that we aim to remove the developer from. 
And in addition, there are so many ways in which you can talk to a, a backend from, from an edge device. For, there's MQTT, there's Kafka, you could use WebSocket, REST, um, uh, that, like just raw sockets if, if you want to go that far. So um, Edgen comes with a lot of connectors that you can use to, to talk to your backend. So that's more boilerplate code that you don't have to write. But um, uh, yeah, I guess um, that's all I really wanted to say. But check out Edgen. It's, uh, it's, it's a cool incubating project. And uh, save the burritos, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, edge devices, I think, are kind of edgy. Obviously, you didn't get the pun. Yeah. I so don't think it, anyone got the pun. So it's a, it's an aptly named device, and I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to say any pun about the name of their. He, he won't. He's allergic to puns. Makes him break out in hives. Uh, so we. Well, apparently, for years we've been doing lightning talks. Um, I've been either helping or. Giving yes, them, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. And yes. we often have to, we, we used to have to go out and, and sort of beat people, not, not literally, no. Literally. Literally we have to do that. No. Um, to get them to submit. And oh. uh, there are some people who I have asked regularly for, for doing lightning talks. And, you know, either they can't do it or they're busy or this doesn't work. That's okay. But I would like to say, I would like to welcome. Oh, oh no. What? It's not, not him. Yes, him. He's not doing one, is he? Well, I gave him the title, so. Oh my God! No problem. So I'd like to welcome oh my, Henry. This is an historic day. Oh my goodness! I would like to welcome Henry Yandel, and the title of his lightning talk is "Thank You, Henry, for Finally Doing a Lightning Talk." Yay! Thank you, Shane. So yes, every ten years, for the last ten years or so, Shane's asked me, "Can you do a lightning talk?" And my answer is always, "I haven't prepared anything." Um, and, I, and I like to prepare things if I'm going to talk to more than two or three people. And there's a bit more than two or three. And I haven't prepared anything. So I spent a few minutes just nodding, noticing some bits down. And I want to say that when I, when I look around, when I look at you, when I look at everyone here, um, do you know what I see? I see recruiters. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean people who recruit stuff. And if community is over code, then community building is over coding. Then your job is not coding, it is being a recruiter. And by and large, you suck at it. <laughs> right? We're not, I, I'm a horrible recruiter. We suck at recruiting. And so my takeaway that I wanted to basically pass along was, Stop thinking of yourself as an open source coder. You need to start thinking of yourself as an open source recruiter. Look at people who do recruiting for a living and say to yourself, I don't want to do that. I don't want to act like that. I don't want to do that as my style. But how should I be doing that? How should I be going to a, contr a, a contributor potential, a community that's near me, and lure them into becoming part of my project? Ask them, what do you want to do with my project? What changes would you be thinking of? Great, come join my project. Stop thinking of yourself as a coder, a person who's sitting there and just churning out the next line of your project, and start thinking of yourself as a person who's churning out the next committers on your project. Because without that, your project's coming to the attic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Henry. Um, that was... Well worth the wait. That Easily. was well worth the Easily. wait. Very, very insightful, really. And it the, really is. the best lightning talk in the shortest amount of time, I've heard, because right. usually we tend to, you know, mm -hmm. some of us tend to take a lot of time. Some like when the year I, you know, right. got thrown off stage because I wouldn't stop talking. That's right. right. Well, I mean, it's because we take pride in what we do. Uh, you know, we're not going off the cuff like that. So that's, that's what it is. It, yeah. it, it's just that, that level of professionalism that we bring to this solemn event. Yes, of course. I think that's exactly what it is. I you think... know what I really enjoy? Woohoo! Cashew clusters. I love cashew clusters. They are the best kind of clusters of all. I cannot imagine any kind of clusters uh, that could possibly I see. I be see where you're better going than cashew I... clusters. I dare you to suggest something that could be better 
than cashew clusters. I mean, you're gonna dare somebody wearing I'm daring a Hawaiian you. shirt it's a like dare. this? Double dare. Go ahead, try. The sun will set try. upon try, your try. premise because at, here at Apache, we have a better cluster solution. No. Yes, we have Impossible. an entire stack of them. A all stack the way of up clusters. to the clouds. It's called our very own Apache Cloud Stack. <gasps> and we actually have somebody, an expert, who's gonna tell us really cool stuff about how Cloud Stack does cloud stuff and cluster management and all that kind of stuff. If Dan is here, come on up. I wanna hear more. Yes. Everybody does, right? Right, right? Yes. Cloud Stack, cloud stack is, is of all those big things. Cloud Stack is the, the project that has the code and the people and the deployments but doesn't have the marketing budget of some of the other people. But better in other, every other That's way. That's gonna to change tonight. <laughs> Let me correct some things. <laughs> Apache CloudSec doesn't do clusters. Apache has a project for that, it's called Mesos. And uh, what, what, actually, a uh, plugin was written for CloudSec lately. Uh, by Shea Blue, company that I recently joined. I'm not gonna spend more slides on them now. Um, which is called Container Clusters. It's using Kubernetes, and the idea come from that, that we need a more generic solution for all types of clusters, not just containers, but also, well, also Mesos, of course, but also Hadoop, or Galera, or Ceph, or maybe some SDN kind of application or maybe your application that you define with five kinds of roles in a multi-tier environment and you can just define those roles in CloudSec and then start them up and, okay, all this is not there, but the start is there and there's a functional spec and I want feedback on that. So this is kind of a question to all of you to go to the wiki, to the C wiki, and then find application cluster service, look at what's there and see whether your project needs something like that or whether it doesn't apply and you need something else and leave a comment there and then I'll look at it and then uh, we're gonna implement something great because that's what we do. So I think that's, that. This was very lightning, right? <laughs> lightning enough? <laughs> that was very lightning Thank enough. you, guys. Well, Shane has Thanks, proved me wrong. There are better things than cashew clusters, application clusters with CloudStack. Color me chagrined. What color is chagrin? Is, is that like mauve? It's like a mauve. Or? It's like yeah. a mauve, okay. kind of like that, that. You know, a little bit of, with sparkles. It's... You wouldn't think it would be with sparkles, but it's with sparkles. No, I can get it with sparkles. I, 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 I could do sparkles. You, know, you wouldn't think of it, but I could. Um, so we, some of us do, and I'll say me, sometimes I like to talk a lot. And uh, apparently we've been talking too long. And our very nice producers are warning us that they really need to get us out of the room. Yeah. We will have one final speaker. One final one. And then close our evening. One. One. And one. I, I don't know. I, I, I usually like to say thank you for attendees. Right. Yes, yeah, so yeah. thank you for the attendees, but, yes. but Nick Birch is going to talk about <gasps> Nick being <gasps> thankful for oh. things, being thankful being for thankful. coming to ApacheCon, for speaking to ApacheCon, for being part of our family and our community. So thank you. Perfect. And thank you, Nick. Perfect. Nick. Thanks. There's a lot of things to be thankful for here, not least the beer. Thank you, Jim and Capital One, for beer. Another thing we can be thankful for is new experiences at the event. So, who here has met someone from their project for the first time? Let's be thankful for that. <laughs> who here has learned about a new project? Come on, are you saying that the rest of you without your hands up had never heard of Edgent? Let's be thankful for new projects. Okay, who's reported a bug, either for the first time or the first time to a new project? New bugs? Who 
who's contributed a patch this week? Yes, we've had some new patches this week. To patches! <laughs> who's given their first talk? Congratulations! Who's made a new friend? Hey! Who's visited a new country coming here? Who's made an introduction, introduced someone to someone else? Who's been sprung on when I've made an introduction of them? <laughs> Sorry, it was good though. <laughs> okay, who's felt their passion recharged by being here? Who's eaten something new? And finally, who's told someone else, not here, that they've really got to come next time? You all need to put your hands up. Come on. <laughs> so, to next year, to new friends, to Apache. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. That is a perfect ending. Almost ending to our evening, we have the fling of the night. The fling of the night. Right here, for all the speakers, we have our if special Capital One gift. Wants one, just raise your hand. I will try to get it. And them we have a few extras, so if you want one, come get it now. Whoa! And we up. would, Jim and I would be happy to stand up here and I'm talk. I'm just throwing as, them around. As, well, okay. As long as you doesn't get not the me. plague, for God's sake. I mean, there. Uh, we'd be happy to. Uh. We'd be happy to speak all night, but you I fear what? that our producer friends are going to have the hotel kick Don't us out Don't the forget, there are so. boffs tonight as well. Yes, so, um, you know, we went a little long, Where's so there are people who don't out? have uh, Where are they? boffs. They're boffs over here. Are... So there is a sign-up sheet over by the registration desk. There's a whiteboard over there that lists all of the boffs and the location that they are in. So please go have a look. Um, Admire Trevor Grant's go, art you. on the whiteboard and pick a talk Ooh. to attend. Hey, boffs are for the next uh, hour or so, and there's six really, really good ones. So let's move on to that with our beers. And, we'll and see thank you all tomorrow. for attending. There are no keynote sessions tomorrow, so thank you all so much for attending. If I don't get a chance to talk with you again, really appreciate you being here. Come again next year. Thanks, Rich.